Blog Talk Radio. Welcome to True Crimes Podcasts. Today I have a special guest, Roberta Glass, and today we'll be discussing the similarities of the Amanda Knox or the murder of Meredith Kircher case and the West Memphis Three. Hi, Roberta. Thanks for being on the show. Thanks. Thanks for calling it the Meredith Kircher case because I think it's really important that we say before we start this that despite what Amanda Knox's PR would like you to believe this is really, we wouldn't know Amanda Knox's name if it weren't for the fact that she murdered Meredith Kircher, who was a beautiful, fight, funny, bright woman. And yes. Damien Eccles, we wouldn't know of him if he had not murdered Michael Moore, Chris Byers, and Stevie Branch. So I think it's, yes. it's important that we remember the, the victims. Yes, yes. And, and, and that's the main reason that I think many of us have gotten involved and actually, I have a small audio clip. Do you mind if I play it from uh, Gary Meese from the um, Ed Opperman show? Because he also sure. explains how he um, got into it. He wrote a book about West Memphis Three titled Blood on Black. So I thought it was uh, related to this. I think you will, too. So here we go. It's not all this information. Mm-hmm. It really, what prompted me to write, start writing these books was a letter that the parents – some of the parents wrote to the Academy of Motion Picture Arts and Sciences about uh, the nomination of Paradise Lost films for Oscars. And I read those letters, and I just felt as much as I could possibly feel what those parents felt, because I can't, I can't be them. I felt something of what they feel, and and how the, not just it's not just anger; it's this deep, continuing frustration. Uh, over 20 years' time of the, the truth being denied, and in many cases, the, the truth being turned around on them, and the parents becoming the so-called suspects, and the constant suspicions and the constant lies that are thrown out, and then and then I, t- I turn around and I see Damien Eccles on Larry King, and he's throwing out lies right and left, and Larry King just sops it all up like, oh yeah, thank you, Damien, that's great. See, yeah, so he was talking about it. I hope he doesn't mind I use a clip from that because I felt that I totally related to that, that you know, you're watching these poor victims' families being just forgotten or and abused by Yeah, I, I read one of the letters that he's talking about from um Todd Moore and it is a really powerful piece of writing where he asked the Academy uh not to grant give the um West Memphis Three documentary and Oscar, and it, it, it's really a powerful piece of writing. He's absolutely right. And I often hear that uh, people who are critics or um, non-supporters of the West Memphis Three or Amanda Knox are guilters and that we just want to be right. Um, I think we certainly feel like we're right, <laughs> um, but yeah. I don't think that's really um, where I think we we – speak out out of a, a sense of um, injustice. Yes, and the truth being denied, like you said, you know, getting the truth out there of yeah. what's going on. Yeah, yeah. So that's probably, maybe that can start off with that's the first similarity is that they both had documentaries made that were biased and misleading. And uh, West Memphis had a few documentaries. They had like three, right, so far? Yeah, and the last one produced by uh, the twice convicted murderer himself, Damien Eccles, west of Memphis. So, when did that one come out last year? Oh no, that came out a couple. Um, I always say a couple years ago. I'm getting so old. Uh, you know, uh, <laughs> no. after he was released, maybe 2012, okay. maybe 2013. Okay. So a while okay. ago. All yeah. Right, all right. What was the title of that one? I don't know if I saw that one. That's not the Paradise. It's West Lost of one, Memphis, though. I believe. And oh, Peter Memphis, Jackson okay. also produced that. Uh, 
gave a lot of money to to put that together. It's really, really? a slick okay. piece. It, slick piece of uh, I guess what, yeah. <laughs> what did someone call the? It's like a, a slick piece of work, you know. It really is. Uh huh. I'll bet. But I'll the bet. Amanda Knox documentary, when I saw it on Netflix, I knew it was going to be because it was from a supporter. I knew it would be from uh, the, the viewpoint of Amanda Knox. But once I saw that opening shot of her feeding her cat, I was like, why do mm. they do this in documentaries? Like, she's just like us. She feeds her wonderfully cared for cat just like us. I was like, oh, we're in so much trouble. This is going to be such <laughs> a pile of lies <laughs> with the cat. Well, too. you know, I was wondering, I was thinking about that today, too. And, like, now if you're an innocent person and you've been falsely accused of murder, are you going to start off your documentary by saying, if I did it, blah, 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 but if I didn't do it, blah, blah, blah. I mean, that's not what. That's not how someone who's innocent talks. You wouldn't be right. going those around who are listening you don't know what we're talking about. What she says is she dresses the audience and she says, I'm either a sheep, a wolf in sheep's clothing, or I'm you. And I was like, no, yeah. I, Amanda, I think you are a wolf in sheep's clothing. <laughs> yes, that's exactly what you are. <laughs> Correct. Thank you for pointing that out. Maybe you should have bring that up, you know. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. But apparently she had plagiarized <laughs> that from someone else, as she so often does. She gets these ideas from, like, other, you know, what she considers falsely Indeed. accused people. She, like, just, you know, uses their line. But I didn't think yeah, it was very does. effective. And I noticed there's a lot of people who who looked at that documentary with an open mind and were like, this woman really gives me the creeps. Like, I'm not sure what's going on in this case, but she does it, she's really cold and a little bit scary. Yeah, yeah. I think both of them, Echo and her. The more you, the more you listen yeah. to them and watch them in interviews, you're like, hmm. The more creepy they come across, the more, you know. The, the, you know, the, I often wonder about Echo's as he's the more time he spent out of prison, and he keeps getting all these occult tattoos, and you know, gets I guess more sort of gothy looking. When he was in prison, he had this really short hair, and he was saying he was a Buddhist, and anyone who said that he practiced the occult they would say ha 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 he's a werewolf too yeah sure you don't know what he's talking about he's a buddhist he's not interested in the occult you're just into you're just a victim of satanic panic etc but now Uh that he has devoted his entire post prison life to the occult and Uh it looks uh, and it's just like transforming look wise i wonder if that is not as persuasive as a clean cut buddhist Married guy in prison. Mm-hmm. No, no, no. He's definitely into Satanism. I don't know about Amanda Knox. I know she. There's pictures of them together. I don't know how involved she is with, but he's definitely into Satanism. And yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, I, I don't. I don't know that. But yeah, she and she. Um, she t- continues to play the image game where she really dresses up like the girl next door, and. Mm-hmm. And uh, says that she really cares about other people while raking in money for herself. Yeah, she's putting more of an effort to else. look like the good girl, but he's not. He's not. He's not making any effort at all. He's just out there. He's the tattoos. No, and, everything. and it said in his prison diaries, which is a um, that I'm not going to give anything to anybody. I'm not prison. Yeah, prison diaries. I'm not going to give anything. I'm not going to give anything of myself unless I get something of equal return or more in value which is actually a Scientology idea that's probably based on some kind of Crowley idea of equal exchange. So I'm not going to mm-hmm. give anything away for free. You know, I gotta, mm-hmm. there's got to be something in it for me. And you can see people tweeting him, asking him for help, and him just, like, ignoring them. Like, i got a kind prison. Can you help out? Not interested. Mm-hmm. And nor is Amanda Knox interested in helping anyone else. It's, they're really no. about themselves. Yeah. But, and, and, that's, and that's shown, but they've, they've both written um, – Memoirs, right? Now, Amanda Knox got right. four million dollars for her memoir in advance. What did what did Eccles get? Do you know? Was that publicized? I don't know. I don't know. Mm. But he, it, it okay. was successful enough for them to come out with a love letter book. So, oh yeah, I saw that. that I believe I thought I think I may be wrong, but it, I thought it was the same publisher, but maybe not. You know, oh, I don't know. but it was really yeah. promoted as just you know almost as heavily as his memoir. Mm hmm. The mm-hmm. lo- love letters from him and his wife in prison. 
So he has enough money to produce a uh, documentary, and he's got two books out, and lots of, mm-hmm. of donations, so millions of dollars. Because Men and Ox has definitely made millions of dollars. I mean, a, and she just recently uh, got picked up by Facebook, is paying her to do a video series now. So she's just making money uh, everywhere she goes. I mean, she's, yeah. Uh, so the, both of them, the, both of them have made millions of dollars since their release in 2000, and they were both released in 2011. That was like another similarity, which is interesting. Yeah, interesting similarity. Yeah. And both okay. of them take the word exoneree and just put it in front of their name without ever uh, being exonerated. Uh, <laughs> which yeah, I thought you pointed one. out. <laughs> it's, it's such a great piece of PR. Just just start saying it, and maybe other people will pick it up. Exon- oh, and, and they argue. Know? Their trolls will argue with you. Yeah, not, neither of them are exonerated. In fact, Menonox was acquitted, and like I said, like O.J. and Casey Anthony, and she was convicted of criminal slander uh, or calumny. Right. And Which she's never paid the money. Speaking of not doing anything for anyone else. Yeah, so it was a very. She small let that guy sit in prison. Made. She accused him of murder. This her boss let him sit yeah, in prison Lumbo. for two weeks, and then won't pay him the damage money as she rakes in more than you know tons of money. Uh, you know, with the blood of Meredith Kircher all over her hands, just continues mm-hmm. on. Yep, yep. It's unbelievable, isn't it? She gets away with it. I don't know how. Uh, no one in the media, the mainstream media, has been completely biased in favor of these two from the beginning. Did you so see you her, hold, her her hand holding that Amanda Knox got too? <clears throat> this yes, is a similarity. Robin Roberts, good morning, Robin America. Robin holding her hand and tilting her head, uh, you know. Mm-hmm. And Damien Eccles got on um, Morgan. What's his last name? Help me, Morgan. Oh, uh, Piers Morgan. You know I'm talking. No. Yeah, Piers Morgan. Saying, well, you look like a really nice guy. You don't look like a creepy occultist. Well, and then they cut to Damien <laughs> Knuckles, who looks like a gaunt, creepy occultist. You, know? <laughs> you don't look like someone who would murder three kids, looking like exactly like someone who would murder three kids. You know? <laughs> exactly. Oh my God. Ay ay ay. It oh, makes you feel like an alien looking at this kind of PR work. You're like, am I human? Like, what world am I living in? You know? Really, it's true. It's true. It's a, it's, a, it's 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 so obvious, and uh, yet it continues on like they think they're fooling anyone. All right. So, anyways, uh, so the documentaries, millions of dollars, uh, and not exonerated. What else do we have? Um, I have. Oh, you know what? Another interesting thing. Oh, uh, oh, here we go. Attacking the victims' families. Both of them now m- more so with the. West Memphis Three, Damon Eccles, uh, turning, trying to turn the blame onto the victim's family, uh, and which they they one or they get two people. They, he tried to they tried to blame two of the fathers of two of the victims, right? Yeah, and he says he's almost a hundred percent sure each time. First time when he Damian accused Eccles? John Mark uh-huh. Byers, and the second time when he accused Hobbs, he's on film saying he's almost a, and Baldwin too, his um, co-defendant saying that, or co-convicted, really, that he's almost entirely sure that they're guilty, both of them. And he also, Eccles also gave the finger to the victim's family in court, and that has been used as sort of a picture of rebellion or coolness among young people. That that drives me crazy, too, Eccles giving the finger to grieving parents. Oh, isn't that Ugh. edgy and great? Oh, my God. And yeah. Amanda Knox the, has said she wants to meet with the Kircher family. She wants to visit the grave of Meredith Kircher, and the family's asked her not to. And she persists saying, you know, talking about Meredith Kircher after, you know, against their wish, wishes. And it's been really insensitive. But that kind of insensitivity is a kind of say, sadisticness, uh, sadism that yes. you yes. see when you're accusing people of falsely accusing people of murder and accusing grieving parents of murder. And um, so it's very similar kind of cruelty. Yes. So it's, it's, it's common apparently with murderers. They like to try to, they like to harass the victim's family. They get uh, some kind of pleasure in that. Well, didn't her co, co, um, Raphael, Raphael Celeste, Celeste, tell her. Yeah. Yeah. I he don't know what to call him. He was convicted her 
co you know whatever cohort in murder. Um, yeah. Didn't he visit Meredith's grave? Yes, he was taken there by one of their supporters there in the UK, and he was without the family's knowledge or permission. He uh, went to her grave. Yeah. Awful. They are. They really awful, are. And he, he bragged about it afterwards. Yeah. Yeah. And both of I them were sex she symbols too. too. Did you notice that? Oh, Amanda Knox, yeah. <laughs> murderer, sex symbols. I, you know, young yeah, girls seem to just think that. Damien Eccles is dreamy. It makes Ugh. my stomach turn. And Amanda Knox too is kind of like a. People well, always about talk about symbols, her looks and how hot she is and t- stuff like that. Yeah. Now I think most people are that admire her. I think there's a certain po- segment of the population that admires the fact that she's gotten away with murder, and they think that it's cool. She's so smart. She's so clever. She's such a. Uh, she she spoke. Um, she spoken at schools and universities. She spoke at a high school, and I remember a high school student tweeting a picture with her saying, "Oh, Menonox is so badass," <clears throat> in the picture. So they just think it's cool that she's gotten away with it. I think you know. You don't think she's like a see? I I th- I, 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 I see her sexuality being discussed all the time. Her looks, her body, her eyes, her, you know, you don't you you don't you don't see that so much. You think it's more of a with her, with her followers maybe her follow. I don't no. I think her hmm. followers are. I think they may be saying that she has cold eyes, ice cold eyes, or something like that. <laughs> I don't well, know. She, I don't... she said she was getting all these proposals in jail. Do you remember that in her diary? Well, she well diary? she said that. Well, she she it, well you know if you, any female killer gets uh, um, certain followers, you know I think. So that that yeah, and I, right. I think I think many of her followers they call them white knights. You know the the men some a lot of the men who follow her, that you know her her supporters, uh, you know who they, who find it appealing like a what do you call hybristophilia? Am I saying that right? Yeah, that's usually um, a, a woman's condition, but yeah, I don't, yeah. I think oh, men no, have it, it too, though. I would say I think it as, uh, but you may be right, it may be able to be applied to men too, hybristophilia. Yeah, oh, I think so, yeah. Okay, how about now, how about the false confessions that weren't false confessions? Yeah, this is a great point. Both use the idea of misuse the term false confession in terms of their case. So Amanda Knox did not falsely confess. She falsely accused her boss of murder, an innocent Mm -hmm. person of murder. That's not a false confession under any definition. And with Jesse Miss Kelly in the West Memphis Three, he confessed multiple times after conviction. That's there's Mm -hmm. no criteria for multiple false confessions. Yes, you can yeah, like, sort of seven times, pro- right? Project and say I have someone who confessed multiple, multiple times, and then we'll say, oh, that's a typical false confession situation. It's it's unheard of. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. To, to and, 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 categorize that as a false confession if you keep confessing over and over in different uncoerced environments with your, especially with the one where Jesse Miss Kelly confessed with his lawyer begging him not to. If anything, that's a false confession in reverse. He's being coerced the other way, Mm -hmm. not to confess. So I I just think it's ridiculous. And also another similarity, too, is not only that, but uh, their followers, their supporters will say later, oh, they were interrogated for hours and hours, and Amanda Knox is going around telling people that she was interrogated for 53 hours. And And I heard with the Miss Kelly, they're trying to say it was... 12 hours of interrogation, but it's all a lie. There is absolutely not true at all. Absolutely. Men and blamed, how did blamed Patrick in less than an hour. <laughs> and she wasn't even supposed to be there. She was just supporting exactly. her, 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 her boyfriend. Mm-hmm. And what I think is really funny about her false confession is that it started out with her, them getting her tea and snacks. You mm-hmm. so often hear mm-hmm. of that with brutal confessions that they start with <laughs> with cookies and tea. <laughs> and crumb cake. Like, yeah. what are we she talking like about here? <laughs> Before mm-hmm. I torture you, you hungry? I just want to make sure I torture you on a full stomach. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Unbelievable. It's a, and they get away with turning it. They're followers, and they just lie and lie, the, the great lie theory or the big lie theory. Just keep lying <laughs> and lying about it. Ugh. 
That's another favorite lie on both sides. Oh, <clears throat> and no one has, and they don't have any, neither group has a good argument as to why Amanda Knox falsely accused her boss. When they try mm-hmm. to make up that argument that, well, it was suggested to her, it really doesn't hold water. And the secondly, the West Memphis Three supporters just don't have any any reasoning why Jesse Miss Kelly would confess so many times under so many un, in so many uncoerced environments. They just say he's stupid, like a child. But what child keeps telling the same story over and over and over again against well, he knew what he was saying. self-interest? I mean, he, he wasn't he retarded. Was, he was, yeah, I mean, he wasn't no. you know, mentally challenged. He was, but he knew what he was saying. He was, he was, he was the only one with I a conscience. They call it. Yeah. What? Yeah, and you never yeah. see him. And, uh, you know, the point has been made, this is not my, uh, that really the West Memphis Three case has never been about the West Memphis Three. It's always been about Damien Eccles, you know, mm-hmm. and what it was a relentless drive to free him. One, because it was he, he was the only one on death row. Two, he was very charismatic. And, but So sometimes you'll see Baldwin, but very rarely will you see Miss Kelly because he's the snitch and I, there's bad blood, I believe, between them. You know, for him, oh, yeah. he, he confessing so many times. Mm-hmm. And the same thing with Amanda Knox. So she's one of three people uh, murdered, married to Kircher, but she's the one that gets all the attention. And this bothered her co-conspirator there, uh, Raphael Fletchto. He was like, it's all about Amanda, <laughs> you know. Yeah, they, they come, yeah. So there's been some resentment with that, yeah. Yeah, and there's even a little bit of a, of a, a um, a similarity in the knives that are used in this case by um, the co-defendants. Like Raphael Selecito had a knife with the DNA of Meredith Kircher on the tip and Amanda Knox's DNA on the handle. And mm-hmm. he said in a prison diary, well, I pricked her cooking one time and that's how it got there. Yeah, and yeah I pricked her by accident. I said, sorry. And she said, okay. <laughs> <laughs> and supporters story. don't have any reason except he went crazy in jail and wrote that. That's their excuse. Seriously. No, and no, Baldwin no. has changing stories for it, whether he owned that knife, how it got in the lake in the behind his house, and you know whether it was his, you know that there's, the knife story changes all the time too. So those are also a similarity. That and they collected knives. <clears throat> Raphael Slechito had a collection of knives, and so did Eccles and Baldwin, right? Yes, and but also both of them had very strange, creepy. I mean, Damien Eccles, this is after prison, had creepy online posts where you know he put up a really creepy pa- painting of some dismembered person and say it's breathtaking. And Amanda Knox put up a picture of herself. Um, behind a kind of machine gun type thing, saying the Nazi yeah. titled it "The Nazi Within." So yeah, that was her, creepy yeah, online crime. social yeah. media presence. Yeah, and she made up her own the Foxy Noxy name that she had was on her MySpace account. She it was her nickname that she had for herself. Yeah, but you know uh, that yeah. was just about soccer, and how dare you slut shame her? <laughs> <laughs> That's the argument by her supporters, right? How dare oh, you? How dare oh, you slut shame? Okay, so she claims to have been slut shamed by the Italians. So and mm-hmm. Eccles claims that he was satanic panicked by his town. So is, is that they both have this? Oh, we're being mistreated and treated like outsiders. But theme going you know, on. when they asked Damien Eccles who they thought did the crime, he said Satanists. And Amanda yeah. Knox gave herself that own thing and was sleeping around like with a person she just met on a train. So mm-hmm. she there even admits go. herself she was sexually free. And then when people accurately identify her behavior as, you know, sexually, you know, I don't know, Well, she said in her memoir, she was on a campaign. <laughs> I don't know how she that's says the kind she, way to put it. She then, put it in her memoir, she was on a campaign of casual sex. Yeah. 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 Yep. But and, the and then you're, <laughs> so it's like, and, and then and then Eccles wrote a, He's saying, I was um, persecuted for my love and knowledge of Crowley. Which he denied on, in, when he was So which trial. is it? Which he denied on the stand, which he now admits to perjury. So which is it? Like, they ha- they have to have it every which way. And that's the thing for anybody who's just, like, starting to follow true crime. Uh, 
a, a good rule of thumb is when there's so many inconsistencies, you know what I mean, in a, in a case from, the, from one side, you have to think mm-hmm. that that side is lying. Mm-hmm. You can't have it both ways. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Exactly. That's actually another thing. There are inconsistent alibis. Um, uh, That's no. another great point. Can we talk about Amanda? Yeah. They were both spotted at the, the night of the crime. Yes, yes. Amanda Knox was spotted by Ant- Antonio Car- Do you know how to pronounce his last name? Carrotolo? Carrotolo. Carrotolo. Yeah. Carrotolo. Who was yeah, a heroin like addict, who was a homeless yeah. heroin addict. And they, it was so funny because they said, oh, he was out of his mind on drugs. And the uh, the man himself was like, look, heroin's not a hallucinogenic drug. Uh, I think I was in my right mind. I know what I saw. I saw you on the basketball courts the night of the crime. And he was um, deemed a credible witness. Mm-hmm. And the Hollingsworth family saw Damien Eccles and what they identified as Dominique Tear, his girlfriend, walking away covered in mud from the scene of the crime. And her alibi was that she was in bed that night with her mom. So you wonder if she was, I wonder, you know, I'm not saying you, I wonder if she was there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. At some Mm -hmm. time, some point, maybe after. They were both seen at the night of the murder. Yeah, they were both seen by witnesses at the night of the murder. Wow. Yep. Wow. Okay. Um, What else? Can I talk about the dogs, too? Go ahead. What about the dogs? Good point about their dogs. No, go ahead. Uh, Forget. Damien Eccles, and this is like to me, this is the perfect representative of of how they use image. Both of them went to adopt a dog from a rescue Mm -hmm. shelter. So Damien Eccles adopted this dog Pumpkin. Amanda Knox. I don't know. I'll just call her Amanda Knox's dog. Don't know. Zena. Zena. Amanda Knox's dog's name was. What was it? Zena. 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 Yeah. Yeah. So she adopted Zena. They took the dog home, and they had to return. Amanda Knox returned Zena with cut up paws. And mm-hmm. Pumpkin was returned, and the reason given was that uh, Eccles was too worried about the dog. But I think that the dog was being used to convince other people that they were really good people, that they would adopt a rescue dog. But when it came to caring for something else, they a possibly abuse the dog, and and b had to return it. And who, what rescue organization is adopting out dogs to murderers? I can't. I have two rescue cats, and I can't tell you what I went through. Home check, vet check, two well, they're references. Well, really in New York. You yeah, know. Yeah, yeah, I know. So I, yeah, I I've just, been there. Yeah. But it right. So you know, you know, it, it just makes it just fits the image game that they all play, that they're really good people. I'll do this. This is what good people do. But they can't really live up to – live up to. they can't perform the behaviors. Well, I was horrified but when I read about the story of him killing the Great Dane. I mean, he's, he's really sadistic with animals, as it seems. Yeah, also very few people talk about um, that he – one girl said that he killed cats with bottle rockets by putting bottle rockets inside them. Mm-hmm. Oh, so God. Yeah. he would also kill frogs. Mm-hmm. And he took a picture of one of his cats in a a pot on top of the stove. And if you love your animal, even if your cat climbs in and it's cute, it's such a distressing thought that you wouldn't take a I wouldn't take a picture of my cat like that. But he thought mm-hmm. it was funny and tweeted it out. It's just the idea of something bad happening to them, so awful. Uh, it, it, it takes away yeah. any cuteness of them jumping in something small, you know? Right. Oh, well, you know what? We only have like a minute or two left. <laughs> There's so much we haven't <laughs> talked about. Um, I want to talk about the, We haven't even touched on the trolls, but I guess we'll do that <laughs> <laughs> we can do it some other. Uh, we're gonna have to do a part two. Clearly, yes, I about I mean, uh, what? I I, I have. Uh, I think there's so many more, right? Yes, yes. Let's do a part two. I'd love to have talk again <laughs> and uh, continue this. <laughs> but thank you. It's been great <laughs> having you on. And uh, yeah, so is there any, any of the? Oh, you know, one last thing I'll add is is the Guardian News and the New York Times 
both were very supportive of both of them. Came out with articles, you know, early on, portraying them, Knox and Eccles, as, you know, wrongly convicted and all this, and what good people they really are, et cetera. So I just thought that was interesting similarity as well. <clears throat> I guess Absolutely. Was- the press almost uniformly won't, won't ask any, or the media won't ask them any tough questions. The only one was Cuomo, Chris Cuomo, who asked uh, Amanda Knox some tough questions, but that's that's about it. But not even that many, just like a couple, like not even as, as, as it should be done, really, with the with this case. Yeah. Ne- she's never been thoroughly questioned. As a, she's never answered the real How dare we even she's... think of questioning her, Liz? <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you, they're, they're too above. They go from prison to being way above everyone else, it seems, yeah. All right, so, yeah, okay, Um, any last word, any uh, closing words for this show, or we'll just leave it at that? No, this is... Oh, this has just been a pleasure. And um, you can find me at Roberta Glass, all one word, at YouTube. Oh, yes. Sorry. There shows that. And I have a link underneath in the description linking to your YouTube account. Um, and uh, thank you. Thank you so much for being on the podcast. And uh, until next time, take Thanks care. Again. Bye. Right, bye. Oh, where's the day to catch you like the night that you used? Oh, shit, I bet it's a minute before I can use it. My goal is to hear you confess, please believe that this is all the beat. Yeah.